Hello and welcome to the Mission Energy Session 2. This is the second session of our campaign and here we're going to be talking about innovations for a greener and cleaner tomorrow. Thank you for our panelists joining us, our audience here as well. Now in session one you saw we focused on challenges and policy recommendations and now in this second session we're going to move on to opportunity and talk about India and the great ideas. We're a country full of ideas, full of great minds, innovators and we want to know how we can work to push those boundaries and work to get more innovations, more thought process into a cleaner and greener tomorrow and set our country in that direction uh, that we want to take, which all of us, which obviously we need to take. So uh, let's get started. I'd like to introduce our panelists here and joining us is uh, Abhay Diol and all of you know him as an actor, but he's also a green activist as well and someone who's very concerned about the environment and, and going green. Sunita Narayan, of course, uh, Director General of the Center for Science and Environment. Also joining us, Saurabh Kumar, Managing Director of Energy Efficiency Services Limited. Thank you for being with us. And uh, Mili Majumdar, uh, Director for Sustainable Habitat Division with Terry. We have with us Dr. Prem Jain, Chairman of the I GBCCI, thank you for being with us. And also our partner, Mr. Yon, thank you for making it all the way here for our session, our green session today. And uh, finally, we also have with us uh, Feli uh, Visco, thank you for being with us. Uh, she's the founder of Loma and Visco. But uh, first to you, Abhay, I'd like to talk to you about your efforts of going green. You were, telling, you were talking about how uh, you, you're building a house in Goa. You've been very actively trying to ensure that it is a greenhouse. And, yeah. and it's great for you to set an example for others and uh, talk about what, what you're doing. I think um, it's an individual effort. Um, and uh, I think while, you know, we have activists, real credible activists here who have been actively out there trying to, you know, spread that awareness and put things into action, as individuals, we can at least perhaps in our own space adopt some of those things that they're speaking of. So this house in Goa is my way of saying, all right, how can I build a house where my carbon footprint is, is small? And so, you know, I went ahead and I've got solar panels being put up, rainwater harvesting, uh, a well and trying to get a LEED certificate, and we were discussing LEEDs, its pros and cons, uh, but, you know, sourcing local we'll materials. We'll talk about that further during the yeah, discussion. Yeah, you know, sourcing local materials. So I think in my living space, I'm trying as much as I can to be as off the grid as I can be. And if I can be completely off the grid, that would be a boon. Sunita, now you, of course, uh, CSE has released an agenda for the, for the government. It's something, your message to the Modi government, and, and you've been talking about how now is the time for radical ideas. It, it's enough of you know doing these sort of uh, cosmetic changes and cosmetic ideas, but we need to change the way our country is moving. And um, you were also talk, talking about micro grids uh, across, and, and that's a way we can provide energy to villages. No, absolutely, Garge. I think you know what's wonderful in India is that I, in my view, and I've been an environmental activist now for 30 years. My view: the issue of environment has arrived. It is the age of environment. People understand the reason why we need to do it. People like Abhay are willing to move that extra mile and actually live a lifestyle which is environmentally friendly. I think the key issue now is to scale up those ideas, is to make the big difference that we can actually change the trajectory also of the way we are developing. Because still, many of the ideas that we talk about still become small, scattered, they get lost. And the big development is still fossil fuel. It's polluting, it's cars in our cities, which is choking our lungs. So we need to think that how do we upscale it. Right. Uh, now, I, I'd like to come to you, uh, Mr. Saur Kumar, and talk about, uh, we're talking about innovations and talking about how we can go green in, in our lives in the cities as well as in agriculture. And if you could talk a bit about what your organization has been doing on this. No, uh, let, me, let me start by saying that there are two sides of innovations that I see. One, of course, is the technical innovation, but the other part is the financial innovation. I mean, how do you get these people into the green space in a large scale? And I'll talk through uh, two or three things that we're doing. One, of course, is what you referred to, the agriculture. As we all know, most parts in the, in the country, agriculture uh, tariffs are usually non-existent, or most uh, places it is free. As a result, the farmer has no incentive to invest in an energy-efficient pump. So what we did in, 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 uh, in Hubli in uh, Karnatak is that we went ahead, we, we first uh, made the farmers aware, and we changed their entire pumps at our own cost uh, to an energy-efficient pump. We are getting 37% uh, savings in energy. That is reducing the state government subsidy by 37%. We are getting 90% of that subsidy over a five-year period. 
and we are maintaining the pump. And how receptive were the farmers to Ex this? Extremely, because uh, while they don't pay for electricity, there is mm. a there is a cost which you have to communicate to them, which is the which is the maintenance cost. They spend. We did a, a study. They spend about two thousand rupees every year for rewinding the pump. Mm. We are providing five years of of free maintenance. So that that was the game changer. Excellent. Now, second wow. thing, I I'll, I'll let you uh, uh, when when we talk about new technologies, new innovation. The reason why they don't get commercialized is the high cost. And I'll give you two examples. Uh, LED, uh, uh, India is the second largest OEM manufacturer of LED bulbs in the world, in, at, at least in this part of the country. Mm. In India, the, the consumption of LED is less than 1% of the total lighting. The reason is high cost. You get a LED bulb for your lighting needs at about 400 rupees. Mm. So what we have done in Pondicherry, which is a second project, a 400 rupees bulb we are giving to residents at 10 rupees. The reason is by that, if, if we are covering about seven and uh, seven and a half lakh uh, distributor bulbs are being distributed, that would reduce the the power procurement cost of the distribution utility by about nine crores every year. They are paying us six crores for over a period of ten years wow. to recover our investment. So that's a, that's a financial innovation that we have done. So what I wanted to say that there is energy efficiency is not a philanthropic exercise any longer. It is a serious business. And it gives yeah, and 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 what what the what the government needs to do is to provide this uh, some support at the institutional level at the at the financing level because financing is a huge challenge and there is enormous opportunity. I mean, you can save. In street light sector alone, five billion units of electricity every year. I'd like to go to Mr. Yon after this because mm. uh, you know what we're talking about and going mm. green in India. And in, you come from from a country where the emphasis has been the emphasis has been there for quite some time. Mm. Uh, so, what has your experience been and, and the, what you've observed here in India and the direction that we're taking? Well, my experience is that uh, there is a lot of uh, potential here uh, to improve energy efficiency, uh, like there is in Europe and the rest of the world, basically. So that's basically uh, the reason why we are behind this as a sponsor as well. Uh, we are in the business of providing energy efficient uh, solutions. We provide clean water to the world. Uh, and that sounds like a very marginal thing, but actually pumps uh, do uh, consume uh, more than 10% of the world's electricity. And if you used state-of-the-art technology, that could be reduced to, uh, to less than 5%. So there is an energy efficiency potential that is significant. In India, I know that 75% uh, of the um, agricultural uh, pumps uh, used for irrigation purposes are quite uh, inefficient. There is a major potential there, uh, but it's not a challenge that uh, India has uh, alone. Uh, it's the same in other parts of the, of the world. We are working with it still in, in the European Union. Um, to be a front runner, we are trying to allocate in Grundfos 5% at least every year of our turnover uh, to research and, uh, and development to increasingly improve uh, the energy efficiency of different uh, pump solutions. Um, that is one of our philosophies that uh, we, are, we are trying to, to continuously uh, improve. Another part of our philosophy is that water efficiency and energy efficiency are two sides of the same coin. Um, I know water is scarce in India, uh, energy is scarce, so it's, it's a major potential to see those two challenges combined. Uh, we have tried to, to, to uh, innovate certain uh, solutions there. Let me give you one example. Um, water is a scarce resort, not least in the rural parts of, uh, of India. Uh, there we have tried to, to, to innovate a, a targeted approach to this uh, base of, uh, of the pyramid uh, segment, where we tried to take three existing uh, solutions, a pump that is not rocket science, um, a solar panel that works, and a payment system that is run by mobile phone. The combination of these three things uh, do that we can actually provide uh, clean water to rural uh, areas that are not uh, connected uh, to the grid. And in a closed payment system with those mobile phone, uh, phones so you avoid to, uh, the misuse for instance and you can also put on a fee that uh, sink in the maintenance uh, of the system so to speak. Great. So it's part of our philosophy to, water, to see water and energy uh, combined and also to innovate not only for the very sophisticated uh, mm -hmm. uh, world market but also for the base of the pyramid uh, market. We're talking of course about rural India and providing energy but our cities need to go green and, and our authorities in our cities need to we need to pressurize them to ensure that they work harder to save energy as well as uh, more use it more efficiently. So what are your thoughts on that? Yes, and uh, you are right, you know, our cities are grappling with several issues related to energy, waste, water. 
and there are several new cities i believe that are coming up you know the new government has a plan for about 100 new cities. cities so hopefully they'll already uh, so, be here uh, i think it will be very important uh, to build them in the right place and to judge the carrying capacity though predominantly in today's discussion we are talking about energy while you can generate energy on source but water is one of the very critical issue which would drive livelihoods and you know the city functioning so doing carrying capacity analysis and citing cities properly and looking at some of the grappling issues which cities now face uh, we need to address them while we are planning them some of them could be you know sort of integrated land use and transport planning looking at you know long term effects on urban heat island impacts and taking corrective actions to bring in innovative ideas so that you don't grapple with those issues later and of course looking at you know what kind of the demand uh, that yes. the cities would have in terms of energy and building in adequate design efficiencies to something um, like what abhay is attempting yeah. in goa so perhaps so there you can actually uh, reduce uh, demand by 30 to 40% that is by experience we can say for sure and once you reduce the demand then you can meet that remaining demand by use of renewable energy systems that makes it much more economical you know much more economic sense dr jain if you would come in here and yes. talk about green buildings and and what what you've been doing and i know sunita you have something you'd like to sure. add to that but let's no, no, let me let me explain right. to you where what the indian green building council has been doing we've been i promoting the idea of going back to the old methods of our old wisdom how to make the buildings and really it's not a rocket science in terms of the how to make the building around a open courtyard how to provide the natural natural light to come in daylight to come in the building and i'm glad to share with you what abhay is doing is wonderful we are now 100 crore square feet of homes in india registered with the council to become green the idea is number four things number one consumes 20 30% lower energy number the home is entirely daylight no artificial light throughout the day beautifully cross cross ventilated so minimum air conditioning load and in goa like thing it didn't not much air conditioning required anyway insulate the building as per the ecbc norms with local insulation available mud first car other methods available to us third is the water consumption that we provide rain water harvesting use of the waste water to be recycled yes. for the toilet flushing for your horticulture fourth is the indoor air quality most important for the home the children are growing up now with a lot of fresh air plenty of sunshine mm -hmm. so green building becomes a naturally a much healthier home and how That's do we make this more popular in our cities and uh, well, we have so much development happening so many builders you know developing homes yeah, housing for, right, for people how right. do we encourage this make it obligatory for the green building specify or the user that igbc has right to revisit and you know in india the price is not that high to revisit the building and they have an automation system ultimately what we want to do is to not give a shield but to have an electronic shield which will mm. constantly monitor what you save in terms of energy water resources Excellent. environment inside Excellent. the day you break the shield vanishes and we put on the website that so and so building is no more green but no more green. mr jain just do one more thing and that will be perfect then put Tell this me. data out in the public i am asking them to give me the right Excellent. to revisit the building and Excellent. put on the website very so good igbc website will have I bet the old building has this energy consumption. Bill. Classic example. Ten yeah. thousand people who like his films, who like to admire what he is doing, will follow suit.